So Cisco extended detection and response, configuring NetFlow and encrypted traffic analytics at the same time on a Cisco Catalyst 9300 switch. Here's the configuration we're going to be working with today. And you're going to notice up there in the upper left, I say NetFlow version 9, and I've got a regular 9-tuple NetFlow configuration um, set up here. You can see, you know, match IP version 4 protocol, match IP version 4 source address. If we're going to use both NetFlow and ETA on the same device, the same 9300 switch in this case, you can't use any of the optional um, fields afterwards. It's only going to be able to handle the, the basic nine at the same time it's doing the ETA. So we're going to, we've set this up, the configuration for the, you know, those basic nine tuples of information. And then, of course, down there um, for the exporter, where it's going, the destination source VLAN, and I'm sending it out on 9995. And then I'm going to be applying all that to the Layer 3 VLANs. So notice that I'm doing this. I'm applying that inbound on the Layer 3 VLANs, you know, VLAN 100, 101, and 102 in um, this example we're going through today. In the lower right, the encrypted traffic analytics configurations, much simpler, much smaller, you're going to see, you know, with the IP, IP flow export uh, destination going to the same IP, but on a different port. A uh, little PNM sensor has to uh, consume that telemetry on two different ports, not the way it's set up right now. But the critical piece I want to call your attention to here is that I am doing it on the layer two interfaces. So there's something about the uh, current releases of code that you can't put both the... Um, regular IP flow monitor for regular net flow and the encrypted traffic analytics, both on the same layer two interface, the commands will actually take, but only the ETA telemetry ends up getting sent out. So as of September 20th, 2024, when I'm making this video, you know, you might be watching it later and maybe that issue will be addressed. But to, you know, today, right now, um, I haven't found a version of code that this wasn't um, an issue with. So that's why we're saying we're going to put regular NetFlow on the layer three, and then um, ETA um, traffic is going to be on the layer two. Looking at this graphic, I'm trying to make this a little easier to understand. You can see at the bottom down there, I've got those nine squares. That's basically your layer two ports. And then um, I have the ovals that I'm trying to represent with the layer three VLANs. And then on top of that is like your trunk port from this particular switch on up, you know, this like a distro switch on up to an, um, a core switch or something like that. You can see I have the um, two trunked interface, you know, wrapped inside of a port channel, kind of an idea. Uh, so generally speaking, I always try to recommend that you take um, regular NetFlow telemetry at the layer two port down there with the input command. If we put that on every single um, layer two switched interface inside of our infrastructure, we're going to be able to see traffic from everywhere going into our um, um, switched infrastructure, right? And our switched and routed infrastructure. There's some situations where that's not always plausible. And um, in this particular configuration, this is one of them because, you know, we have a device that's capable of doing uh, ET analytics or encrypted traffic analytics. Um, and there's just that weird idiosyncrasy right now that um, if you put them both on the same layer two interface, you only end up receiving the ETA analytics. You don't get the regular NetFlow. To get around that, we're going to put the regular NetFlow on these layer three interfaces. And then all the gig one slash zero slash ones, all those at the bottom down there, that's going to be our... Um, we're going to do the input command there. And we're also going to do it on the trunks. Now, you can't put it on the port channel, even if... Um, at the top up there, um, but put it on the trunked interfaces, the individual trunked interfaces, the NetFlow, um, the ET analytics in this particular case. And then, of course, the regular um, IP NetFlow command is going to go on the layer threes. That's what we're going to be doing with this in order to make this work like we want. That way, we're going to get both types of telemetry. I'm logged in to our uh, 9300, our little lab 9300. We're just going to go ahead and apply the configuration in here. So I'm just going to copy and paste it in. So the first part, of course, the uh, basic flow record with the nine tuples that I told you about when we're doing both NetFlow and ETA at the same time, we can only get the uh, nine tuples mm -hmm. of uh, NetFlow. Now the flow exporter, and I have no idea why it says 
when I do the copy paste, it copies like some of the stuff multiple times. I mean, I assure you it's not in there in the actual config multiple times, but it's just some weird copy paste error. I can't figure it out. And then of course the flow monitor and the cache timeout active of 60 and inactive timeout of 15. And I talked about that in a previous video. If you want to learn more about that, um, what those configurations mean. All right, now we're going to go do the interfaces, and I get the same weird copy and paste thing. I have no idea what that is, but you can see I'm <laughs> popping it to the layer three VLANs, the IP flow monitor um, input command, so that in all three of our VLANs there, it's going to be um, configured. So anything going into that VLAN, we're going to be able to get regular NetFlow on. All right, now for the encrypted traffic analytics configuration, if I manage to type the word exit correctly. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and paste it in. And we're going to put in ET analytics. And then our IP flow destination and port. Notice we're doing that on the quad nine port. And then let's go ahead and apply it to all of our interfaces. Our layer two interfaces is where we're putting this one. And I have it both on our regular ports and, of course, on the trunked ports. And that's it. All right, give me a minute to generate some traffic here so we got something to look at. We're using TCP dump here to do the verification on the PNM sensor. I'm using dash I so I can indicate which interface it's going to be coming on. I'm expecting the traffic to come in on 99.95. I'm using dash N to suppress it looking up or um, resolving the DNS names. And then of course, 10 packets. It looks like one packet's already come in here and uh, it's not moving real quick. Clearly I didn't generate enough of this type of traffic. Ah, uh, there we go. So here we're going to actually look at, do a TCP dump for the ETA telemetry. And you can see, so anything received on 99.99, 10 packets. I didn't use the dash N, so you can see the system will try and actually resolve the name of the uh, PNM sensor. And there it did. Wow, look at that. We uh, got a lot of uh, ETA telemetry. So clearly I generated enough of this kind of traffic for it. So there you go. Okay, here I am in the XDR Analytics portal. I've gone into my lab-pnm-1 sensor and clicked on all sensor details. And you can see down there at the bottom for the telemetry receivers, port 9999, showing recent bytes of nothing received. Don't worry about that. That's kind of, it's a graphing error apparently, and I don't know when they're going to fix it. So if you're watching this and, um, you know, sometime after September of 2024, they may have corrected it for you. But as of right now, that graph does not always work for ETA telemetry. So I'm going to show you how you can verify that it's actually being received in your environment. So here I am in the XDR Analytics portal. And to do my verification for encrypted traffic analytics, I'm going to go to Investigate Encrypted Traffic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want to see the traffic from the 10 address space in my particular case here. And I'm going to go back a couple of days. Let me just go all the way back to like the beginning of this week or something like that. Select that range and apply. And we should scroll down here. Well, there it is. It's already there. So all of this. Now, what can you see on here? It talks about like the protocol, TLS 1.2, what the key exchange was. So, you know, we can see this traffic. And what's kind of interesting, right? You know, all mine is uh, TLS 1.2, but I've actually done this in some... Uh, customer sites and I've found TLS 1.1. How long has that been deprecated? And I've um, actually seen SSL 3.0 once too, you know, and how long was that? How long ago was that deprecated? So, uh, the, you know, at the very least you can go in here and see what kind of um, TLS traffic is actually running around in your environment. And if something that is old and shouldn't be in there, it'll stick out like a sore thumb. So, and, but that's how you can go and verify. So, Keep in mind, for Catalyst 9300s, when you're configuring them to send both NetFlow version 9 and encrypted traffic analytics, you want to place the IP flow monitor command for the regular NetFlow version 9 on the layer 3 VLAN. 
you place the ET analytics enable commands on the layer two interfaces. You can do that for both the access ports and the trunk ports, but don't put it on the port channel. It's no good there. And then only configure the NetFlow version nine flow record with the required nine tuples of telemetry. Uh, don't add any of the optional fields.